you have your PI planning coming up and you're freaking out. Why? Because you haven't got your features ready. Or even if you have got your features ready, you're wondering how can I make my features better and how do I know when they are ready? If so, this is the video for you because in this video, we're gonna cover how to get your features ready for PI planning. We're gonna look at a template and provide you one in this video. And we're also gonna look at some examples. So buckle up and let's get started. Hi friends, I'm Ahmed, a scaled agile and productivity coach based in the UK. On this channel, we cover productivity, agility, and joy at the workplace. Who is this video for? It's for new product managers, it's for release train engineers, it's for scrum masters who wish to become release train engineers or product owners that wish to become product managers or whoever is new to Agile and is wondering how to get their features ready for PI planning. Now I'm assuming you already know what PI planning is. If you don't, please click over here somewhere because I won't go through that again in this video. So let's recall what are the inputs for your PI planning. So input number one, the main input that you have is this list of features, right? We have a list of features of maybe up to say 10 or 15 or 20, whatever that is. You have your list of your features of your requirements that you're bringing into PI planning. Then you need your PI planning vision. This links into your roadmap. What is the overall vision that we have for this next PI planning duration, which is between eight to 12 weeks. We also want an architectural runway is what is the architectural roadmap or thinking? What do we actually need for the next quarter or for the next eight weeks, whatever your duration actually is. Getting your performance from your previous PI, very important. We need to take that information. We need to bring that into, into this PI as well. And also I frequently have something what I call a feature team matrix, which will be in an upcoming video and it maps on the features onto the teams. And if you're interested in that, then subscribe. And hopefully as soon as I post that, that will come through to you in your feed. Okay, so let's get started. Let's have a look at the standards feature template from the scaled agile framework. Okay. So the first thing that we have is you will probably have like a feature number that's probably going to be generated from your SDLC tool or whatever tool or mechanism you're using to actually store all of your requirements. Then what you want to have is you want to have a title. Now remember this title, we want to keep it as simple as possible. We want to make sure it's business oriented. It's not technically heavy or it's focused too much on uh, technology. I use a grandma test, right? If you can bring your grandma in and you can, and she has a look at that, she should understand. Oh, I understand, that's customer registration, right? So that's the best I could do, right? The next is after feature title, you have feature description, right? Now this could be actually what outcome you wish to achieve, or it could be a hypothesis of something. It could be an experiment or a spike or an investigation. We may not know for sure exactly what it is we are, uh, what the exact outcome is, but we may be testing a hypothesis as well, okay? And in the third element of this, of the standard feature template, is the success criteria, okay? How do we know when we are successful? Frequently people ask, how do I form this? I've got a quick trick for you. So if you uh, use this statement, it's gonna really help you to fill this out. So if you say, we are done when we have one, two, three, four things in place, right? Then we are successful and we'll look at that uh, at an example in just a moment as well. Then that's a really easy way to cut to the chase, to cut out all of the waffle. But remember one thing, we wanna make sure this is defining what, not how we do something, but what it is we actually want. There's a separation of what from how, and we need to be careful not to start to go too much into the how, because that's something that will come out partially during the PI and during also through a little bit in the PI planning as well, but mostly during the PI. So now let's have a quick look at an example. This is a real world example. It's been, it's got some of the customer uh, confidential information that's been stripped out of it, but the essence is there. Right, so let's have a look at this now. So this is about resource management. How do we get managers to be allocated to the right projects at the right time in the most efficient and effective way? Okay, so that's what effectively what this is about. Let's have a look and see how we would put this into the actual feature. So we have a simple and clear title. Hopefully 
understandable to somebody who's not even technically savvy. We've got a feature description, helps resource managers to have real-time visibility of available resources so they can manage them effectively. And look, we've got a list of very clear, simple, straightforward success criteria. Note one thing, note two very important things. First, we don't really say how we're going to do it. Leave that up to the team, right? If you're a product owner, product manager, you're helping to put this together. If you're a lease train engineer, coaching your, your product manager, make sure you separate that. Don't go down into the how because you're limiting the creativity of the team in how to come and address these requirements, okay? So they're very much on the what side of things. And the second thing is they're very straightforward and simple to understand as well. So each of these success criteria over here, these are clearly outlined. When you have all six of these criteria, you can set your feature to done. Okay. And so that is your success criteria. Okay. So now this is the standard safe template. Now what I want to want to give you as a little bit of a real world gift, if you like, right, is when I have a more complex feature, I have stolen, shh, I've stolen the epic structure and I've actually stuck it into here. So if you look now on the screen, what you're going to see over here is you're going to see a template which basically has taken the epic structure over here, it's put it in the description and it's just padded all of that out to give more richness and more information. You may decide to do this for all of your features or you may decide to do this for a subset of your features or none, right? That's entirely up to you but I wanted you to be aware of some of the real world tricks that I'm using as well, okay? So let's get started now. So exactly the same scenario, no difference in terms of the actual elements, feature number is the same, feature title is the same, feature description, success criteria, it's all the same, okay? Now, what's different? What is different is, is when you look at the feature description, look what we have over here. We have a template which is, you may recognize this as the epic template, for those of you who are not, let's go through it really quickly. So we've got four, and this is who is the uh, beneficiary of this, who is the, or who is the end user of this feature, and who's going to actually use this feature. So that's four, and then it's like who. What is it they wish to achieve? What is it, what problem they're trying to solve? And then you've got a name of the feature or, or a description of that is a what is this feature, what's it actually going to provide, a specification of what is it that we actually need, which provides a specific benefit, and unlike our current situation, which is, is contrasting what's the delta where we're moving from and where we're moving to, right? Our solution it provides this more detailed information. Now, I'd use this where, for example, you've got inconsistencies, you've got multiple people putting your features together and you're trying to build consistency across the train. This is a great way to do that. So you make sure that there's a uh, adequate amount of information in the feature. But also remember, we want the feature to be not huge. We want it to be able to fit on a card so that uh, basically we don't make it too verbose as well. Okay, let's have a quick look at same example using this now complex feature template, okay? So let's have a look at this. Four resource managers who wish to have real-time visibility and the ability to manage the resources. And then you've got the function name. What is it about? It's a capacity planning and manage, management capability. What does it do? It enhances our ability to balance demand with the available resources, unlike our current situation, and it goes on, so on and so forth. It goes on to explain how that actually works. Success criteria, no change over there. It's gotta be sharp anyway. Now remember, your success criteria is something that should be driving your tests, right? So your tests at the feature level would then go down to your tests at the story level as well, okay? So there we have it now. You've got a template for simple features. You've got a template for complex features as well. If you go into the description of this video, you'll actually see a link so that you can download this template if you wish. No email necessary. Top tip, remember, you don't need to know everything up front. It's okay if you need to uncover and discover something. Please fall down the waterfall trap where you feel you need to have all the answers for everything. You are likely, you are unlikely, I should say, 
to have all the answers, okay? So, next steps. If you want to learn more about PI planning, then please click the link over here. And if you would like to subscribe to, to get more tips and more ideas on PI planning and scaled agile and productivities and, oh my God, even joy, then click the subscribe button over here and look forward to seeing you in the next video. Thanks very much. Goodbye.